Okay, so I'm in my garage and uh, I'm going to put my respirator on. I've got my my protective gloves on already. This uh, this toluene, this toluene is uh, is pretty nasty stuff apparently. Um, so I'm wearing a an approved respirator um, to make sure I don't inhale the fumes. Um, got a little mixing tub here um, to mix in the E6000 um, and a couple of different uh, cheap brushes. So these brushes, when I've done this uh, this test, I'm just going to throw them away because the chance to clean them is probably going to be almost impossible. So these are just like really cheap brushes. You get like 10 for a £2.50 or something, so they're 25p each, really nothing. So yeah, so we're going to mix the toluene up on the bench now and um, I'm going to narrate this from... Uh, I'm probably going to narrate it afterwards because I want to put this uh, this respirator on. Um, I'm guessing that uh, it's going to be quite difficult to uh, to hear me speak. So uh, we'll just uh, try it and see what it actually sounds like. So I think it's probably going to sound pretty crappy, to be honest. Okay, so yeah, the respirator is on. So I don't think I'll do the narration wearing this because uh, it's quite even difficult to speak wearing this. So um, Okay, so I'll just go quiet now. I'll do this uh, thing and then we'll, uh, we'll narrate it afterwards. Okay, so um, got the E6000, get the E6000 into the tub. I did realise with hindsight that I probably should have weighed how much uh, E6000 I put in there and uh, measured out the uh, amount of toluene in millilitres to get the, uh, the mix proportions for the next time. But um, I didn't think about that until I was watching this... Uh, and uh, beginning to narrate it but yes i'll definitely do that when i do the uh, the next build which will be coming straight after uh, the one that i'm finishing now so yeah get all in the tub um, just use the, what was remaining of that tube get it in there and then you can see that it's pretty thick uh, e e neat e6000 is pretty thick so i decided to do a small amount of toluene and if it wasn't uh, thin enough then i could just add a little bit more so just a little honey splash so i don't know maybe um couple of thimbles full, a um, couple of teaspoons or something like that. Didn't mix very well with the um, with the stick, so I uh, got the brush in there and then it really started to mix really well. With the stick I was worried that it wasn't going to blend, but I uh, got the brush in there, mixed it around uh, you know, for a you know, good, good 30 seconds, maybe longer, and um, got it all really well blended. I realised I needed a little bit more toluene, so I did actually add a little bit more. Uh, when I added that, it blended nicely. Um, there was a few air bubbles in it, so I did leave it to stand for a minute or so before applying it to the plane. Um, but yeah, the consistency is not like water. Um, it's uh, thicker and more viscous than that, but it's a lot thinner than the E6000. Okay, so uh, I actually uh, fastened a, a tub, a pin tub, to the uh, base of the plane with some double-sided tape in the area where the, uh, the landing pad decals go. And... Uh, I just decided to do the underside first and I could flip it over and stand it on top of that tub uh, and do the top side. So I could do the whole thing in one run rather than, um, than, than do the bottom half, leave it to dry for 24 hours and then do the top half. So I'm, I'm applying the, uh, the, the E6000 mix pretty liberally uh, at this stage, just kind of slapping it onto the uh, fuselage with the idea that I can uh, get it on uh, quickly. I had no idea at this stage how long it was going to take before it started to set or get to dry so uh, I was going pretty quickly. Um, the idea was to get it on thickly then just spread it out and, and make it really the same level uh, once I've got it actually onto the fuselage. So yeah, really spreading it around on the fuselage, um, just getting it on and then uh, following that with the uh, kind of like smoothing it out. So and getting it around the front of the uh, fuselage as well. So uh, blending the bottom half to the front so that there's a uh, a nice level consistent uh, amount of coating and uh, making sure that I'm getting the edges and uh, yeah pull all the uh, all the hairs that come out of the cheap brushes off you don't want to leave those on there you never get them off when it dries so yeah gently just spreading it around um, you know you kind of look at it and it looks a bit thick and so you spread it then there's a bit that's not quite thick enough and you spread it so it's just a matter of uh, you know trial and error. Uh, it's probably a good good idea to have some good lighting when you're doing this because that really helps when you angle the plane to see the areas that are thick or the areas that are too thin. Um, and make sure you get around all those edges around the back of the motor mount so it's completely covered. I didn't actually go inside the edges of the uh, fuselage where the wings go, but I did actually cover just the edges you can see there, just to make sure that the wings actually uh, you know cover the uh, the seam if you like oh, another hair there get that off 
So yeah, that was the, the bottom half looking pretty good. So we flip it over and you'll notice that um, I've wedged open the hatches so that um, I can get the side of the hatches coated and the top of the hatches, but not uh, be, be in a situation when it's dry that I have to you know, run a Stanley knife blade around the hatches to open them. So it's a nice smooth edges. So just put a little bit of foam inside the hatches just to keep them popped open. So make sure you get um, it in every little area. Also, you can coat the, uh, the battery, uh, battery area so the battery plate, uh, I do this anyway with all my planes and um, it just stops the battery from sliding around when you uh, put the strap on. So yeah, um, make sure you get it in all the little areas of the fuselage, um, especially in the, uh, the air intakes and the exhausts and just spread it nice and evenly. Um, I'm probably about 20, 25 minutes in now and I'm still kind of messing around just making sure there's no runs or any thick areas inside the uh, areas where the hatches go. I didn't want the hatches to fit too tightly. I did appreciate that they would be tighter uh, because the hatches are coated as well. Uh, but I didn't want to have any problems and I didn't want to have to peel any of the excess E6000 off or cut it with a Stanley blade to weaken it. So I'm basically just uh, going around again, making sure it's as even as possible everywhere. Making sure that these uh, edges of the hatches on the inside are covered. Uh, just just this, where the, the the hatches meet and uh, just basically getting it all to the point where I was happy that it started to look even. You can see in the light that uh, it's really well covered. And when I flipped it over, I noticed there was a few runs. So I had to start again, just spreading it out. Maybe that would be you know, a good idea to do it in two halves and not have those runs. But they did come out. It hadn't dried yet sufficiently to stop me from spreading it out. So I just spread those out. And then just spent the next few minutes just gently, really gently with not much brush pressure, just smoothing out every little area that I could think of um, until it looked as consistent as possible. So uh, especially around the front where the, that seam, the, obviously the, uh, the fuselage is in two halves, so I want to make sure that seam is completely covered. So just getting to the point now where I'm thinking, you know, when is it ever going to end? Um, you know, you, you look at it one minute and it looks really like it's finished and then you see another little bit so you just keep going but eventually you get to the point where you think well I think it's probably time to call it a day so uh, yeah I uh, called it a day there and uh, just left it to, to dry yeah so that was it uh, job done pretty pleased okay so it's 48 hours later uh, after 24 hours I did actually put another coat just around the front just to give it a little bit of extra protection. Um, but it's actually dried, um, well, beautifully really. I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but there's a, a real kind of sheen to the, uh, to the surface, top and bottom. Um, real sheen to it. And uh, same goes for the... Uh, the winglets, I've coated the winglets too, they've got a nice coating on them. And um, with the, uh, the hatch covers, I actually put the decal on and then I actually put the E6000 over the top of the decal. So everything looks really good. Um, now the old AR Pro have been using this stuff. Now I've, not, I've deliberately not cleaned this. Um, so I was landing in a kind of a rough, muddy field and uh, you can just see I've got the E6000 just on the nose section of this one. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it, you can see the, the marks where it's hit the ground quite hard, but it hasn't actually scuffed into the foam. And that will just actually, those scuff marks should just wipe off. Just let me get a cloth. Just, uh, yeah, you can see that they just wipe off and uh, it hasn't actually damaged the foam. So, no idea how this um, is going to perform. This is going to be a plane that I'm not going to be landing on muddy or rocky ground. This is going to be for grass only. So uh, yeah, it's got a really nice finish. So I've got all the components here ready to start putting everything together. So with the, uh, the wings, which are obviously all laminated now, and the, uh, the winglets, we should get quite a nice Quite a nice shiny finish to the plane with uh, the coating and hopefully it will uh, 
it'll be stronger. So I guess only, only time will tell. The only other thing I've noticed is that when you coat it, if you coat inside the hatch covers, that they, they fit a little bit more snugly because um, the tolerance for them is obviously increased. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because um, it means that they're a little bit tighter fit. Um, so you just have to like press them in place and they do actually feel really, really solid. So if I just put the rear hatch on as well, that's exactly the same. You kind of get a bit more of an interference fit now, which is, uh, which is quite nice. So yeah, all in all, um, I'm really chuffed with the way it's turned out. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to get all the components here into the plane. You can see everything's ready here. We've got the ESC and the ESC mount. We've got the, the, the beeper, we've got the GPS. You've got the Sunny Sky motor mounted to uh, obviously a white motor mount. And we've got the trusty Matek F405. It's my last one. So uh, yeah, um, I printed the actual GoPro mount on this one in white as well. And we've obviously got the, uh, I printed these servo covers in white, but I might actually do those to match the elevons um, in carbon. I'm going to uh, hydro dip these elevons in carbon fiber hydro dip. Uh, so I'll probably do those as well. So I've got some black ones here, which I'm going to try and hydro dip in carbon to match the yellow ones. So that should look pretty, pretty cool, hopefully. So yeah, pretty much there. Um, so yeah, the next episode will be uh, doing the hydro dipping. Uh, and then finally, it'll be the assembly. And uh, then it'll be the maiden. So yeah, great. Really happy with it. Until the next one. Take care.